regarding the inorganic chemicals that are useful for pharmaceutical industry. So the test for today's purpose is the aim of today's practical is to perform and remove the living test for chloride as per IP. So here the chloride is an ion which is inorganic chemical and this inorganic chemical has its own role and when it is added to the other substance or other pharmaceutical products that may act as impurity or other sources compound that can hamper the stability as well as the activity of the compound. So for this reason we will at first we need to know what is limitation. So it is defined as the semi quantity test designed to identify and control small quantities of impurities that may be present. That indicates it is a semi quantitative analysis. That is, there are two types of analysis. One is quantitative and another is qualitative. So this is semi quantitative. So semi quantitative analysis where we can identify and we can control the small amount of impurity that can be present. It cannot be said that that sure be present. If that is present or not, at that means present exceed the limits or not that can be identified using this limit test. So for this reason we are going to separate this practical according to different headings. The different headings first are this aim, second references whether where we can take this practical and third point that is requirements and fourth principle, fifth procedure and five finally we are going to come towards the result. In terms of aim, this is the aim that is to for two. So we have to perform and we have to report. So this is the two term perform and report. We are going to perform in laboratory and we are going to report in a proper laboratory notebook. Okay. So next in the reference, the it will be the book, the name of book with author from where it has been taken. Under requirements, there are two sections: apparatus and glassware that may be of a test tube that may be of natural cylinder that may be of glass pot as well as apparatus like a weight, a measuring cylinder along with the weighing balance and under chemicals we are going to take the sample for which we are going to perform the limit test along with that there are other chemicals like sodium chloride it will act as standard compound silver nitrate it is a reagent and nitrogen it is also used as reagent so this is the principle based on which the limit test has been designed if there is chloride ion present you know that chloride ion is a anion and when chloride ion is present in any solution in presence of silver nitrate in, in presence of in presence of catalyst nitric acid it can produce silver chloride the silver chloride is white turbidity which is insoluble in water and it will, it will appears as turbidity or opalescence in the solution so based on the quantitative analysis of this uh, opalescence or turbidity we are going to say that whether the limit of this uh, chloride ion is more than standard or not according to the ip the standard compound for chloride limit is sodium chloride and according to that the particular amount of sodium chloride that is 0 0.05 uh, w by V percent is the standard of chloride that can be present or in maximum amount according to IP in pharmaceutical compound. So for next we are going to perform the procedure and after that we are going to see the result which comes according to that observation will be made that whether the compound pass the limit test or fail the limit test. The condition is when the test solution shows the less turbidity than standard solution then the compound pass for the limit test and when the test solution shows more turbidity or opalescence than standard solution and then it will fail the limit test and we have to reject the sample or the compound for considering it into further processing into pharmaceutical compound so let's go to the working uh, slab where we are going to perform the laboratory thank you friends so this is the apparatus used for living test of generally uh, insoluble ions like chloride ions or the sulphate ions and iron we are going to perform in the latter stage. So there are this uh, um, uh, instrument or apparatus is known as Lesnar cylinder. Here we have marked as S and T that is for standard and test. So in 
one cylinder we are going to perform the test for standard and we are going to perform the other procedure for test solution in this crystal tube so for this reason we need some reserve reagent like the sample so we are taking a chemical that can be sample this is the paracetamol for tablet use and uh, we are going to see whether the paracetamol for tablet use under uh, this condition can be used for the further processing or not by using the chloride limit test okay and here we are having a distilled water this is the standard solution of sodium chloride i have already prepared that and this is the dilute hmo that is required for further processing and this is the silver nitrate solution we have required this for uh, producing turbidity so at first we are going to on this digital balance we are going to weigh the sample and this is the butter paper and after using this butter paper we are going to just tear it to make a zero zero digit and then the prescribed amount of sample according to indian pharmacopoeia we are going to take it for the further processing so according to that this is very minor amount 0.05 mg and that is the 0.05 kg that we are taking for the further processing so this is the test sample and we are going to transfer it into test nestle cylinder so this is as tray so we are going to transfer it in test nestle cylinder and under standard nestle cylinder this is the standard solution and according to the procedure 1 ml of standard solution is required for further processing so this is a 1 ml pipette just we are using the rubber bulb to suck the sample of 1 ml that we are going to use so for measuring the volume actual volume you have to be very precise because with the good laboratory hand you can get a good result also and the chances of error is minimal so i have transferred the standard solution under the nestle cylinder that is designated as as so this is the standard nestle cylinder and the next procedure we just have to transfer 1 ml of dilute nitric acid to the test as well as standard solution so for this reason we are using the different pipette that is different from standard solution if you are going to use the same pipette using standard solution or using for reagent then the, the error or the chances of error is more okay so this we are so we are just going to use 1 ml of dilute nitric acid for the test solution as well as standard solution so for handling the pipette you have to see on that you are taking the pipette in the left hand and from right hand you are using the rubber bulb to suck the liquid that can be sucked using this pipette so we have transferred 1 ml of the solution into test and we are going to transfer 1 ml of dilute energy in the standard so this is the second reagent under the test and for further processing we are going to make up the volume up to 50 ml so there is a clear mark of 50 ml in this nestle cylinder so using this measuring uh, cylinder that is also dry and clean for use we are going to use the distilled water to make up the volume so for standard cylinder so this is the 50 ml mark in the test test and we are going to by same process we are going to mark up to 50 ml in the standard we are taking this measuring cylinder that will help us out for maintaining the accuracy of this practical
if you are going to pour the solution or water from the bigger container the chances of error is more so we have to learn also where we can eliminate the error so that our result will be good and that is beneficial for our laboratory hand and uh, we have seen that we have maintained the 50 50 ml mark in both the tube now just we are going to use the simple nitrate solution so for this reason we are washing the pipette as we have used this pipette for different reason so we are going to washing it and using the rubber ball we are transferring 1 ml of silver nitrate into test solution and further One ml of the silver nitrate in standard solution. It is a good practice to always close the chemical container after use. So see, this is the changes. So this is the changes that in test solution and standard solution both changes. its color to the opalescence and this color of white due to the presence of silver chloride in soluble ion so this silver chloride making the solution as a milky appearance that is the white appearance and with the black background we can see whether this is uh, whether the solution pass or fail so we can clearly see that the the turbidity or opalescence in test solution is less than the standard solution after some time you will get a precipitate in the bottom also and this test solution having a less turbidity than standard solution so we can so the intensity of this color can be measured or can be viewed against the dark background only so previously it was seen that the test solution or standard solution may be of similar kind but under the dark background you can clearly see that the standard solution having the more opalescence than the test solution that's why the standard solution is more hazy than the test solution so we can uh, identify that and we can say that the sample pass for the limit test for chloride as the test solution showing the less opalescence than standard solution for chloride so thank you friends thank you for your spending your time for today's lecture today in uh, in the laboratory we have learned how to perform a limit test in laboratory to eliminate the impurities of any ions that can be present in pharmaceutical compound for the further processing so thank you students